Um, in this video, I'm going to be working through a selection of problems. And these are problems where you need to work out the oxidation state of a particular element. In this case, I'm going to do um, four problems which all involve carbon. And we're going to be working out the oxidation of carbon in these different uh, compounds. So let's begin. And I've also got a periodic table here so that I could just to help me to work out the oxidation oxidation numbers. Okay, so the first question, uh, work out the oxidation state of carbon in CF4. So this is tetra, tetrafluoromethane, tetra, tetrafluoromethane. Anyway, yeah, um, and to work out the oxidation state of carbon in this particular mo molecule, first of all, we take a look at the periodic table, and what I can see here, looking at fluorine, which is here, is that it's in group 7, and it's near the top right, and as I said before, as you go to the top right, electronegativity increases, and fluorine is the most electronegative element here, so... Obviously, fluorine is going to want to be very, very greedy with the electrons. It's going to want to pull the electrons toward itself. And so, it's, and it's going to want to get one more electron to get the 7 to an 8 to fit, to, to fill the, the outer shell. So, in this case, each fluorine atom here is going to have an oxidation number of minus 1 because each one is going to want to steal uh, one electron. But not necessarily steal it, but be greedy with it. So we say that the oxidation number of fluorine is um, minus 1. And since there's 4 of them, as you can see, there's 4 of them, we multiply this minus 1 by 4, and that gives us minus 4. And this molecule is neutral molecule, and so if I write this up as an equation, this being the um, oxidation number of fluorine, the oxidation number of carbon plus the oxidation number of fluorine must equal 0. And this is the total fluorine, so F4, so to speak. And so what we need to do, just imagine in this in, a, in sort of an abstract context. So we've calculated that the fluorine one is minus 4. So all we need to do here is carbon plus the oxidation state of fluorine, which is minus 4, is equal to 0. And this is just like one of those algebraic equations you see in algebra. So carbon, and if we move this to the, to the other side by... Um, adding 4 to both sides so if we add 4 to this side what happens is this minus 4 becomes 0 and this 0 becomes 4 so carbon equals uh, 4 therefore the oxidation number of carbon equals 4 and so we can say for this one the oxidation number of carbon is equal to 4 or we could say plus 4 if you want to okay next question work out the oxidation number of carbon in C2H6 and um, C2H6 is an alkane, and this is um, particularly, this one is ethane. I'll just write that here, ethane, ethane. Uh, you might burn this uh, for fuel or something. So ethane. Um, hydrogen tends to have an oxidation number of plus one. And this isn't an, an, no, any exception. Because hydrogen is over here. If it was in the periodic table, it would be here, H. And so you can see, as I said, electronegativity increases in this direction. It's much less electronegative than carbon. And because of this, it's not going to want to be very greedy with electrons. It's going to want to be generous with the electrons. Carbon, you want electrons? Take, take take my electrons, take my electrons. So that's what it's going to be saying to carbon. The carbon's going to be like, oh, thanks. So carbon is accepting, well, not accepting those electrons, but it's sharing the electrons and it's 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 enjoying the electrons much more than hydrogen is because hydrogen doesn't really want them that much. And so hydrogen is going to have an oxidation uh, number of plus one per hydrogen atom. So plus one. And we, we have H6 here, so we're going to multiply this plus 1 by 6. So plus 1 times 6, which gives us uh, plus 6. And if I make a sort of similar equation again, 
we we see that two carbons because this oxidation number of carbon is the oxidation number of an individual atom of carbon in this so in this equation i've written a two head to represent that we've got two carbons and we've already worked out the oxidation the combined oxidation number of all four hydrogen atoms so 2c plus 6 as in this plus 6 equals 0 because we know this molecule is overall has uh, no charge and so if we calculate this if we if we subtract 6 from both sides we, we find that 2c equals minus 6 because we've subtracted 6 and subtracted 6 from 0 and now what we need to do is find out the oxidation um, number of an in individual atom of carbon so we need to divide both sides by 2 so divide this side by 2 divide this side by 2 and so we'd get carbon because we divide this is equal to minus 3 so, and so therefore we find that the oxidation number of carbon in this particular molecule c2h6 is minus 3 so that's how we'd work that one out so now let's move on to the next one chcl3 so what I would call this, now you're probably familiar with this molecule, maybe not the molecule, but this chemical, once I tell you what it is, you'll probably find that you know it. And if someone asked you to smell this on a cloth, I wouldn't advise it. Uh, because this molecule is actually chloroform. Uh, the technical name for it is um, tri trichloromethane or something like that. Yeah, trichloromethane. Uh, let me just write this. Actually, I won't write trichloromethane. I'll just write chloroform. Chloroform. So if someone gives you a cloth and asks you, it does this smell like chloroform? Don't smell it. Anyway, so for this particular molecule, we've got a mix of hydrogen and chlorine, all bonded to carbon. So if I was to draw this, it would be carbon, um, maybe hydrogen up here, uh, chlorine, chlorine here, uh, chlorine here and um, chlorine here so it'd be a uh, probably a tetrahedral molecule so if we now take a look at the periodic table for chlorine we find that chlorine is um, just below fluorine so it's very very electronegative as you can see chlorine and so chlorine is going to be greedy with electrons it's not going to share it's not really going to want to share them it's sharing them very very reluctantly so chlorine is going to have a since it's group seven just like fluorine is it's going to have an oxidation number of minus one minus one and we've got three of these here so we multiply this minus one by three and that gives us minus three and now if we if we um i'll just put this in a box and move on to hydrogen just remember that this one is here for chlorine and hydrogen is 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 very not it's not very electronegative it's more of a generous electron uh sharer it doesn't really um it's not too not too picky about electrons so hydrogen in this case is gonna have its stand pretty standard elect, um, oxidation state of plus one plus one and carbon if we now put these in equation we can find out what the oxidation number of carbon is going to be so this is hydrogen and this was from chlorine and so I'll, I'll put the equation um, down here uh, we've only got one molecule one atom of carbon so we don't need to like put 2c or anything so carbon plus um, plus one this is the plus one from the hydrogen uh, minus three and this is the minus three from the uh, chlorine uh, equals zero since this is a molecule is neutral it has a neutral charge of rule and so chlorine uh, plus one minus three that gives a minus two equals zero and so if we now uh move this minus two to that side by adding adding two to both sides what we get is chlorine equals what chlorine equals plus two and i mean sorry carbon equals plus two so carbon would have an oxidation number of plus two and so yeah that would be oxidation number of carbon and now let's move on to this one this is ethanoic acid ethanoic acid and i'll just write um uh i'll write uh yeah ethanoic acid and 
you're probably familiar with ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is one of the main ingredients. It's a weak acid. It's one of the main ingredients in vinegar. So like vinegar, you got quite a bit of ethanoic acid in there. And so let's begin with this one. We've got hydrogens. And as we saw in this last example, hydrogen is usually very generous with its electrons. And this is not this is no exception. So hydrogen, we've got how many? One, two, three, four, since we've got three plus one, and that's four. So plus one, this has been a four hydrogen, multiplied by four gives us four. And so hydrogen is gonna have an overall oxidation, um, oxidation number of plus four, as in all of the hydrogens, combined oxidation number. And so now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen, we've got two oxygens and in this particular case, the oxygens are not um, bonded to each other. If you were to look at this bond, it looks something like this. So C and it's double bonded to O and this is bonded to an O and this is bonded to a H. So if you remember the exception from before, which was um, uh, 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 um, hydrogen peroxide, which was H O O H. It's not in this particular example, oxygens aren't bonded together. So we just take the oxidation numbers of oxygen to be its regular oxidation number, which is two. So we take two and there's two of them. I mean, minus two, minus two. Yeah, minus two. So minus two, which is oxidation number of oxygen multiplied by two. Since we've got two oxygen atoms here gives us minus four. So this is the oxidation number of um, oxygen. And in this case, this is like this case because we've got two, um, no, like this case because we've got two carbon atoms. One, two. So what we're doing, what we need to do in this calculation is write that two carbons, two carbons plus four minus four equals zero. And this is a pretty simple one because if you look at this, um, that means that these, 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 if you, if you add four and minus four, you just get zero. So two carbons, two carbons equal zero. So we know that the oxidation number of two carbons is zero. And if we divide both sides by two now, the oxidation state of carbon is just zero basically. So in this last final case, the oxidation number of, of carbon in this vinegar or well, ethanoic acid is going to be zero. So yeah, I hope you found these uh, examples uh, helpful. So yeah, that's the end of this video.